The Halloween season is about, so it is appropriate to discuss the internet's stranger stories. A digital ghost story. One that occurred at the advent of the modern internet. Many of these episodes survive in scattered fragments, but one can be cobbled together from references, screenshots, and articles. Though these can never catch the exact absurdity of the moment, as the name of Project Digi Clips can barely speak for itself. Few remember the name and the madness behind it, or those who believed in its mission. One of the internet's oddest, half-remembered stories. It often leaves people scratching their heads at the pure insanity, or the madness in the details. A tale of internet madness, trolling, and pure stupidity. Project Digiclips, the online cult who thought Digimon were real. Today, it is hard to turn up much solid info on Project Digiclips and the form behind it. Only a few sources remain that cataloged it. Mainly Encyclopedia Dramatica, Something Awful, and 4chan. So, the usual internet suspects. All who would be key players in its downfall, through their trolling of the group, is exactly what preserved the information. What precious little does remain. Project Digiclips, and later incarnations, yes, there were more than one, was an online group who believed Digimon were real. Yes, the digital dinosaurs from that Japanese children's franchise. And they could see them, because they could break down the barrier between the real and the digital world. Yes, they were serious. To them, this was absolutely real. A bit extreme. Who would believe fictional animals could be summoned with plastic toys? Why literal children, of course. Children and the mentally unstable. As this form was clearly not home to the most mentally developed, it ran the gamut of ages from 12 to 20, but the user base was not exactly stable or very honest. Thus, no surprise, literal schizophrenics were attracted either. The entire forum was rife with bizarre theories and pseudoscience to support their beliefs. Often completely incorrect, and almost religious in form, the group had more than a passing resemblance to an actual cult. As their mission statement, yes they had a creed, attested, Project Digiclips is the combination of hope, belief, and the theories of members of all Digimon believers. The point is, we believe that Digimon exist, and we are determined to find a way to bring them to us. I will spare you the rest, but you can read it here. As you can see, it goes rather disturbingly in depth. So how did such a group first emerge? Project Digiclips's exact origins are somewhat obscure, besides being the result of just simple childhood daydreams or literal schizophrenia. A Yahoo Answers post from about a decade ago suggests a real Digimon Believers MSN group did exist alongside it, with the user Green Dolphin claiming to be from there, but take that with a grain of salt. So its roots likely date rather far back online. What many would know as Project Digiclips emerged as a form sometime between late 2007 and early 2008, ran by a mysterious individual known only as Pentium, though only the remaining scattered screenshots support these claims, as the actual form itself is long defunct and little of it has been archived in any form, and what remains should be taken with a grain of salt due to the sources and how it is often framed. The only thing we know for sure about Pentium is he was likely 18 when he created the forum, supposedly running the entire operation off a rather outdated computer. He is also the most likely candidate for being the one who established the group's, uh, mission and what could best be called beliefs. There does exist a supposed photo of him, but I will spare you the incredibly pale details. What image remains of the forum itself supports its rather infamous reputation such as people using string theory to justify belief in Digimon, and, because it's obvious, the real world was actually based off the Digimon world. People believing Digimon are watching them when they take out the garbage. Also, of course, asking what to do if your parents find your Digimon. So, normal and sane things. Funnily enough, the most extensive documentation of Digiclip's, uh, mission statement, comes from a contemporary form thread on March 16th, 2008, about a week before Digiclips's discovery by the wider internet. And who first found the form? Why the Naruto fan forms! And when Naruto fans are looking down on you and mocking you, you must know exactly where you stand. The term Digiclips appears to come from the group slash forum's pseudo-religious beliefs. 
by using their digi devices, yes those plastic toys, they could destroy the barrier between the real and digital world. All they had to do was raise them to the sky at the same time, all across the world. By using them this way, they could create a mini eclipse and become real digital champions, the first supposedly occurring on March 16th, 2018. And even if you did not have a digi device, you could still participate, even with a just a stuffed animal. If they weakened the barrier enough, they could create a digiclips, where they could enter the digital world. Thus the name Project Digiclips. No, this was not a suicide cult. It is as insane as it sounds though. A group of crazies on some apocalyptic mission to summon cartoon dinosaurs. Project Digiclips's rise to public infamy and immediate downfall would come on March 23rd, 2008. After circulating on the internet for a while, about a week, something awful caught wind, where the forum became the website's awful link of the day and the subject of an article ridiculing it. It is from this article a majority of surviving posts from Project Digiclips come from. Unfortunately, in barely less than 24 hours, Project Digiclips would face its downfall, as immediately every other internet forum from 4chan to NeoGAF took notice of the Digi-Truthers, coming to their forum to troll or observe the chaos. As goons, something awful users, supposedly either hacked the website or gained access to Pentium's computer, taking the site down for an extended period, until it returned under possible new admins. Digiclips continued to be hit by raids and trolls constantly afterwards, from everything to hacking, to spamming, to more subtle trolls, as one of the few archived threads from the website shows. Eventually, the trolling and users had grown so extreme, Pentium and the other admins abandoned the site, posting a statement that unfortunately no longer exists. By at least mid-2008, a majority of the website admins seemed to have disowned the website's rather embarrassing mission, the original forum going offline by early to mid-2008, having existed for only a brief span of about six months. Those six months still being enough to attract enough infamy and actual zealots, cementing Digiclips's infamous reputation. But even this could not kill the digital true believers. Digiclips reemerged under new management in 2009 under the name The Digital Research Project, or as it became known, DERP. By this point, composed only of literal children and hardcore true believers. Little remains from this derp period, however, as the trolls seemed to have lost interest, and it was likely a little different from the original Digiclips period, with other boards appearing beside it. The only tangible evidence from derp being a few absurd screenshots about what to do in case of the Digiclips occurring, meaning the forum followed basically the same beliefs. Just be sure to have a camera to get proof of those wascally Digimons, and a knife in case you need to fight them off, unless they feast on your bones. Thanks for the advice, Nicholas underscore Rage, the, uh, uh, digital researcher. This website too met the same fate, closing by 2012 with little fanfare, but with a lot of emails, as the group predictably could not open the portal to the digital world. Maybe they just didn't believe hard enough. The most bizarre episode of the Digiclip saga does not come from the actual website itself though. It actually comes from a parody website likely started by 4chan anons in the same vein, Project Pokeclips. Basically the same thing as Digiclips, but with Pokemon, and purposefully ironic. Except, the joke was lost on quite a few, as it was intended as a honeypot to troll children and Digiclips true believers, who actually believed the trick. Then the website got posted to the World of Warcraft forums where most did not believe it was a troll, until a few who got it pointed it out, resulting in what amounted to a reverse discovery of Digiclips between the WoW forums and Pokeclips, where many did not know Pokeclips was a troll site and attempted to troll it. Not much info remains on the series of hilarious misunderstandings, but it seems to have been a mess. Since 2012 though, Digiclips true believers seem to have vanished off the internet, keeping their delusions to themselves or growing up. Not to say there are not still people with similar delusions. Social media seems to have made it unlikely for something like Digiclips to ever emerge again, unnoticed. Due to social pressure and wider awareness, closed communities can no longer grow in obscurity. The name Digiclips still lingers about the net as something like an online fever dream used only in reference to an incredibly bizarre episode or a community who shares similar delusions. 
fallout from the event itself has made it rather hard to define what exactly occurred. Only a vague picture exists. Still, Digiclips and the events around it remain as an interesting case study. In all respects, Digiclips was an online cult. An absurd, almost harmless one, but still a cult. One that accidentally, or purposefully, preyed on the young and unwell, even if it was not intended to. It was a byproduct of their beliefs. The website and group had what amounted to a spiritual mission, a form of worship, and pseudo-eschatology. It is lucky no one within it seems to have ever been exploited in any form, as far as we know. This is probably due to the incompetence of its leadership though, as Pentium did not seem too aware and the administration did not know what power they had, even within such a small group. As the group itself meets 9 out of the 12 points outlined by Lanja Lalic and Michael D. Lagones 12 point cult checklist, though in a much reduced digital format. Placing emphasis on ritualistic activity, mini clips, forming a new lifestyle, one around Digimon, and awaiting some grand revelation slash event, the Digiclips. Digiclips resembles the digital millennialism movement in total, with Digimon being a stand-in for God, form administration for clergy, mission goals for a creed, and digi devices for prayers. All equivalents to the major points that constitute religion. A faith that worships a children's toy franchise. Instead of Jesus, they have that gun Digimon. Others have drawn a more open comparison between Digiclips and the Millerites, a messianic American Christian sect from the 1840s, led by William Miller who thought the second coming of Christ was imminent, leading to the aptly titled, Great Disappointment When He Did Not Show. Then what's to be learned from Digiclips, besides being a new incarnation of religious apocalypticism, but with second-rate Pokemon? I am no moralist, so I cannot say. I will conclude that the internet has always been incredibly bizarre, and being such an odd place often facilitates such bizarre behavior, be it either ironic or sincere. The digital asylum and all that. There is a difference between joining the riot and enjoying it. Since its inception, there has always been something incomprehensible lurking below. Just always remember, for better or worse, we are digital champions. Be be When he tried to match the ranger with the big iron on his hip, 